the oldest in the calendar. In 1934, as Jim said, it was first run, and amongst the names entered on the results for this race are Alan Jones, the current world champion, John Watson, the second part, Mike Hawthorne, Sid Taylor, and of course, also, a previous winner of the Linster Trophy is Eddie Jordan, who just happens to be sitting beside me. Well, thank you, and yes, I, I had a very pleasant memory winning this race um, two years ago. It's a, a very big race. Uh, a lot of pres prestige in actually winning it, and as Alan has already told you, some really good names. In fact, Alan Jones, James Hunt, and, and Watson, to name but a few. But um, always a great turnout of cars. Uh, people put a lot of preparation into this particular race because it's coming towards the end of the season, and it's a good pointer for what's actually going to happen next year. And we have a good shot here of, of Ray Malik, who already has won the British Championship this year, and he should be really the man in contention. Well, he equaled the lap record in practice, a lap record standing since 1974 and being created by a very famous driver who was so tragically killed in the Graham Hill air crash, Tony Bryce. But Ray Malik, a professional racing driver, been brought over by a ceiling sponsorship who have put their name on this race, along with a lot of the other top English drivers. But that is nothing to decry the talents of our local Formula Atlantic people, because joining Ray Malik on the front row of this one is Richard Carson, the man from Hollywood, County Down, in his rather aging Chevron, who went round in a fabulous time of 55.2 seconds. In the second row of the grid is the man leading the Irish Formula Atlantic Championship at the moment, Trevor Templeton. Alongside him, the man who came from hot rod racing into Formula Atlantic just two years ago, Tyrrell Arnold in the Argo. On the third row of the grid, Alo Lawler, who is, has been second in the British Championship, an Irishman, but has lived in England for many years, and he's going very well at 55.6. And then the incredible, never-aging Patsy McGarity, who is still in with a slender chance of pulling off his fifth Irish Atlantic Championship here this afternoon. He's alongside Alan Ola in the third row of the grid. Then we have Dubliner Tom O'Leary going very well in the Rolls uh, on the fourth row, alongside Ian Flux, who won on his last visit here at Mandela last year in the strange, rather awkward-looking Elric car. So that's the lineup. Well, in actual fact, just one pointer to the actual makes of cars. It's really good and interesting to know that the first four cars on the grid are all of different makes. We've got Rolt, Chevron, Rolt of an older vintage, and um, an Argo, something that we haven't seen too much in England of this year. Argos seem to be a little bit off the pace, so it's a great tribute to Turtle and Ireland to get it up onto the second row. So there's the hot favourite, number 14, Ray Malik, a professional racing driver, son of Arthur Malik, who's a racing car constructor and the current British Formula Atlantic champion. It's the second time he's won that championship. On his right, Richard Parsons. There's the Trevor Templeton, the second row. Trevor Templeton, who leads the Irish Atlantic Championship, alongside him, Tyrrell Arnold. The lights have changed, and away they go. Out of the shell, there's been a touch. Somebody's off on the right side. It looks like Tyrrell Argo. Argo, I think it's Tyrrell Argo's off on the right side. And it's back in front. Ray Malik in first place. Ray Malik in second place. And it's Richard Parsons leading this one. An incredible start by Richard Parsons from the outside of the front row. He got away when there was no trouble, and that's what happened Richard, to Tyrrell Argo. Three of them tried to go abreast, and there he is there now, which is a shame. It looks as if he's out of the race. It was a bit of a brave move. Three of them got alongside, and wheels had to touch, and he, it was unfortunate to spin off. We have, in fact, Richard Parsons, a really good lead at this stage, and which is incredible for him because he's done very, very little racing in, in, in Mondello this season. But there's the danger man right behind him. Ray Mallet making a challenge from the inside down as he does up. That Parsons counteracts it. Closes the door quite legitimately. In third place is Trevor Templeton just coming down now. And then in fourth place is looks like Alan Lawler. Richard Parsons then with about a two or a three lead car lead on, on, on Ray Malloch. In actual fact, you could see a very good indication there at the last corner at Dunlop, where Richard Parsons braked early and accelerated on the par out, so he had great power to roll with the car, and, and which, in other words, he was able to get the power on much sooner than Ray Malik, and you could see the gap that he pulled out immediately. And we wonder how long these wonderful moments of glory can last for Richard Parsons, but this really is a fabulous sight. An amateur racing driver in a very underfinanced team in a very old Chevron leading the British champion at the moment, and at the moment, amazingly, pulling away from him.
And this, in actual fact, I spoke to Richard not long before the start of this race, and he was a bit downhearted because he told me he's changed the engine this morning. He, he broke the, the uh, lead on the, the, the top of the head of the previous engine, damaging all the valves, and this is a new, very second-race engine that he's gone in, so he'll be even some more surprised than any of us. I think Ray Mallick has decided just to cool it a bit and steady it. He's never been to the Montello track before. It's a full ground effect sport. It's got a long, long way to go this race. 30 laps in this sea length for the Atlantic. It's the trophy. And Ray Mallick now gradually easing away at that lead of Richard Parsons. But Parsons looking confident and extremely fiery and quick as he turns in very early that time for us. So rather a mistake there, I would have thought. Yes, perhaps so. But uh, another person who you'll find in third place, Trevor Templeton, has won this race, as far as I know, last year in a Formula 3 car. And he, like last year, came from behind. He caught Bernard Devaney and, and won here, as he did the year before that, even again. An amazing guy on a big day can always pull something big out. In fact, not only has he won this uh, race last year, it's the actual car that he's driving, but in Formula 3 4, he also won it the year before. Patsy McCann is through. He's through. Ray Mallet through on the inside of Shell. And it looked so easy for Ray Mallet there, just sneaking through on the inside of Shell. Yeah, this car that Ray is driving is the very latest Rolt, and a Rolt or T4. And you can, you can see that he's got absolutely fantastic braking ability. And that's where he got Richard Parsons. But Richard Parsons is able to put the power down onto the car because of the wider nose, it creates more downforce. And for that virtue, he's able to... Oh dear, we thought we might have had a change of leadership yet again there, but this is the thing which I've been speaking about. Richard Parsons is able to put the power down quicker, so the twisty bits is Richard's best area, whereas Ray Malik is able to do it on the faster section. Well, we thought we might have had a change of leadership. We very nearly had a change of paint as Richard came alarmingly quickly into us at that time. But look at Trevor Templeton in third place now. He's the big threat in the British Championship. There's the leader, number 14, Ray Malik professional racing driver from England. And there's Templeton's car, his father alongside him there, Malcolm Templeton, bending over the car. Again, a very famous racing driver himself, and this, of course, is crucial for the Irish Championship. Exactly, and as you notice, I think there have been perhaps a little bit silly. There's a lot of smoke there. The engine has been overheated, perhaps, either by a slam. Alan Lola, third place man, just coming up to lap uh, Bob Harlan. Lawler there coming out of uh, Castro, up the Ford Street, banging on the brakes, down through the gearbox, down to about 30 miles an hour, sliding her out and then down the main straight. And there's the battle just behind them, and a tremendous battle indeed it is for Ford Street. That's Gibson on the left of your picture, Patsy McGarty and Ian Flux, all challenging as they come down to Shell. Gibson for Ford, McGarty slips, Flux six. And McGarvey, that's how close it is. McGarvey actually saw some sign of contact on the front of his nose cone. I hope it doesn't happen like what's coming to it shortly. It's a corner called Dunlop, and I can, I've can i noticed over the last couple of laps that McGarvey has definitely got the edge under braking at this corner, and we will just wait and watch to see what's happening, because this is it's coming up the one after this, and we will watch to see if McGarvey will get by. This is his big chance then. He's coming very quick out of Castle. He's done that right, but he's a little bit further behind Gibson than he was in the previous lap. Sponsorship to use car guarantees that he is a director of. And McG McGarrity still not able to make any impression and still waving the finger. I used to see these fists waved in my mirrors actually. McGarrity is he's quite well used to waving his fists. I think he could drive his, the car with his hands off the steering wheel. He's that practiced at it. And of course. Uh, Gibson will be completely oblivious of that fact. Uh, it would be quite hard to threaten Gary Gibson, I would think. So Gibson there in fourth place. Interesting, on Gary Gibson's car, we noticed that quite a, 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 quite a sharp flash of, of sparks, which would indicate that his car is bottoming at the rear end of the car, which I hope something on the suspension hasn't failed, which would also indicate why the car was locking a front wheel. Well, Ray Malik. Uh, the leader, number 14, we just saw a shot of him and again. Patsy trying at Dunlop to give some for first place. This could be an ideal opportunity for Patsy to go by. He got out of the corner a lot better, he put the power down better, and as they approach Shell, no, Gary is wide to his, his exploits, and he closes the door, which, is, Alan has already told you, is quite normal and is understandable. 
And again they battle, down the back straight, down towards Duckham's corner, the trickiest corner on the whole course, the double apex right-hander. Gibson very quickly to that indeed, and uh, managing just to keep that gap. There's the race leader, there's Ray Mallock. Uh, having completed 27 laps on his 28th lap, Ray Mallock, 28th lap of this 30-lap race, so... So Ray Mallock and actually back coming up go. to lap Nick Adams. As they enter into Duckham's, yes, he gets by on the inside, a very good move. Nick Adams may not have seen him, but as well as that, Ray Mallock was well able to take the initiative and go by. So the leader then, 27 laps completed on his 28th lap, just going past uh, Nick Adams, who's trailing the field, rather surprisingly, one of our English visitors, who is a former Grover Award winner, which is one of the top honours you can get in uh, English motor racing. That's Nick Adams, that's Ken, Ken Files, Files just behind him. So Ray Mallock coming up to lap, Jeff Byman, and also another English person. And as they come up to Shell, he goes by on the inside. Ooh, I don't think he saw him either. However, Ray Mallock puffs the smoke there coming out of his engine. Obviously, he's beginning to get a little bit hot as well. An amazing thing. It looks like that that 1974 lap record is still going to stand. Nobody really pushing uh, Ray Mallock all that hard. And there goes Patsy again. And surely he must get past Gibson before the end of this one. Yes, that's the corner I predict, Alan, that he will actually go by on. That Dunlop corner, it's, it's quite visible and noticeable that he's got far better brakes and he's able to put the power down better than Gary Gibson and this could uh, give him the initiative that he needs just to get by. So there we are, there's the gap, there's the battle for Ford still going on and there's Ken Fowles trying to get past Nick Adams down at the tail of the field, number 19. Yes, and he does too, I think Ken Fowles gets by. The leader then, Ray Malik, onto his last lap for the last time down through Shell Corner. I'm getting a little bit of a thrill there by squirting the tail out of the road. Ray Malik then off out into the country, and he's only got Duckham's, Esso, Castro, and Dunlop to go before victory in the Leinster Trophy. Yes, yeah, so a good one for Ray here. Ray lives about three miles from me in Silverstone. His father builds racing cars for the lesser formulas, a very, very nice, shy, quiet town. chap. Gets on with his racing and does a very good professional job, as we've witnessed here all day. A very good driver. Incidentally, he's sponsored by Shamtex, who is uh, an importer of Irish shoes to England, we'd be glad to hear. A man who comes to Ireland and spends his money here and does it and spends it well in Irish goods and exports it to England. So well done, Ray Malik, a superb win. There's Ray Malik, takes the chequered flag and another famous name on the Linster Trophy. In second place, Richard Parsons, a superb second place and really quite a close finish. Third is Alo Lawler. And now we wait for fourth place, this dice, but that's Nick Adams. That's Bob Harlings, just a back marker coming in there. And here they come for fourth place, Alan Lawler. There's Gary Gibson, is he going to hold off? Patsy McGarity, they're absolutely side by side. But it was Gibson for McGarity, then Bill Gowdy, up a place and no sign, I don't think, of Ian Flutch there. So, Alan, you'll be glad to hear from what I can make of this anyway. The championship table reads as such. This is all unprovisional, or provisional, I should say. Patsy McGarrity at 79 points, Trevor at 76. So, on this, the last race of the Atlantic Championship in Mondello, it looks as if Patsy McGarrity has won his fifth full-time national championship. We'll obviously have to confirm that fact, but if it is the fifth championship in his career, it is an incredible performance that will probably never be beaten. Meanwhile... There's Ray Malik, number 14, the winner. In second place, Richard Parsons, an excellent drive by the privateer. Third is Alo Lawler, and fourth, Gary Gibson, just ahead of Patsy McGarrity. So there's Ray taking off his balaclava and his helmet. You can see lots of big smiles on his face. In actual fact, on these cars, the engines rev so highly that they put earplugs in it, so it's not as deafening for them as it is in actual fact for us. They hear very little, so that's why they have to look in their mirrors all the time. And uh, a good race for, for Ray. 
Ray Mallock, then a gentleman who's had a rather up and down career in, in his uh, racing career. He's hoped to break into full time Formula 2 racing. He's competed in a few races in this car in Formula 2 this year. Uh, and he hopes either next year to do Formula 2 or the new British Formula 1 championship. In fact, on his left there with the beard is Cliff Smith, the man who has put in the money and is the, the man who believes so strongly in, in the Irish products. The Minister for Sport, Michael Keating, presenting the uh, the winner with the, his laurel leaf and the famous Leinster Trophy there being prepared. Amongst the names on that trophy are people like Mike Hawthorne and, of course, Eddie Jordan. <laughs> Ray, can you put down the trophy for just a moment yeah, and talk to us and, and on, on the camera? Give it back to the minister. He can hold on to it. Um, just look around like this. Congratulations. You, Thank you. You won the English Championship and yes. now you've won the Formula Atlantic and the Irish Championship yeah. as well. Tell us about the drive. Uh, well, I had a bit of a problem at the start. I couldn't hold my uh, engine rev steady and Richard uh, got well away from me going to the first corner. Yes, there was a bit of a dice going on up there. Did you hear all about the, the tangle and the traffic? I saw there? a tangle going to the first corner. I didn't know who it involved, but yes. uh, luckily Richard and I were away from it. And uh, my brakes seemed to be working better in the race than they had in practice, and I managed to slip by Richard going to the first hairpin. And after that, there was no problem, just uh, quite a bit of oil on the track, which meant the cars were sliding around, but uh, the car ran faultlessly. I was going to ask you, your car seemed to hold up very well in spite of all the... Uh, your, your, your difficulties, but it seems to be going very smoothly. Yeah, well, we've got a super team of mechanics, and our team manager, Mick Paris, has uh, kept them well in order this weekend, despite the festivities to, yes. through your hospitality. But, uh, yeah, it ran superbly. Um, what do you think of the track, may I ask? It's a, it's a super little track to race on. Very interesting, different from anything we've got back home. It's, uh, the peculiar thing about it is it's very difficult to set the car up to make it run quickly because of the bumps. We have to run the car quite a bit higher and harder than we would do normally back home. Um, but uh, I'm pleased to be racing here. Isn't it? During the race, now 30 laps is a fair old length of time to stay going in spite of uh, everything. And there's always the possibility that you're going to get tied up with some of the back markers and so on. How about that today? That was no problem, surprisingly. In practice, we had some trouble, but uh, they were very good. Uh, I'm pleased to say. Who did you think was going to be the biggest danger? Um, I really wasn't too sure. I think. Uh, uh, Probably uh, Templeton because he won in the park last the other weekend. Yes, but he had a bit of bad luck. Did he? I didn't. Uh, yes. What happened? Did he yes. go off on the on the start? Yes, he came yes. in. Yes. Yeah. So other than that, it was really Richard who I thought would be pressing us, Richard Parsons. Mm -hmm. Well, you can relax now. You can open the champagne. The congratulations are all yours, Ray Mallock. Thank, thank, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And uh, that's where we're going to leave it with the congratulations developing and all enveloping um, Ray Mallock at this stage, and deservedly so. Let's say goodbye from a sunny Mandela and remind you that tonight we're going to show you live at 9.15 the final of the U.S. Men's Singles Championship from Flushing Meadow in New York. I hope you can join me on RTE1 at 9.15. Bye-bye.